What's up guys, it's Wanda Turtle. So today we're doing some more Magic the Gather opening. We are starting our second box of War of the Spark. And so far it's been amazing. I feel like this thing has been well worth the wait. And I feel like the power level just like spiked. So that's why the like the estimated value of boxes are just crazy high right now. All right, we're gonna do 12 more packs. So if you haven't seen our the results from our first box, definitely go check it out. Got some amazing pulls. And in my opinion, likely one of the best cards in the set. All right, let's get into it. The card that we're searching, chasing the most right now, I think, is Liliana. The thing is like General Lord or something, Zombie General. <laughs> and uh, as usual, we'll go through some of the commons in the first couple packs, just see if there's anything cool. A Sky Theater Strix. Yeah, that doesn't sound that good. Steady aim. <clears throat> Fresca's finisher, and then Silverwing, Gloomhulk, and then we have Domri's Ambush, Bond of Insight. For our first uh, Planeswalker, we have a Teo, and then Dread Horde Invasion. We pulled one of those before. The uh, kind of like the zombie army thing is really cool. They kind of remind me of um, the Unsullied from Game of Thrones. We have a Gideon Sacrifice, Teferi's Time Twist. Grim Initiate. Close look at the zombie horde. Nahiri. Dismissal. Grazer. And then we have a cool celebrant. Liliana's Triumph. That's actually a really good card. And then a Nahiri. Do we already look at Nahiri? Let's see. As long as you're turn creatures, you control first strike and equip abilities cost. Wow, that's really good. Takes four to past. I feel like all the planeswalkers, even like the um, the uncommon or uncommon ones, are really strong. I'm typically impressed with how high their loyalty costs are. Even they don't like, even when they don't have plus abilities, it's fine. All right, we're gonna speed up. D Spark. I feel like this card could be pretty good. Prison Realm, Challenger Troll. Oh my gosh, we pulled another Nicol Bolas. So this, uh, except for Liliana, this is probably the highest priced card. So it's really strong for three black, one blue, one red. So you do have to have a bunch of colors, but you can use any of the loyalty abilities from any other Planeswalker. And then you can draw a card. Um, and then each opponent either discards a card from their hand or they exile a permanent. Or you can just discard, destroy a creature for minus three. So insanely strong. Very sick pull right there. That is the second one we've gotten so far. So, so far our openings have been absolutely insane. Uh, definitely hit that like button down below to support the channel. And uh, yeah, tell me about your own openings, how, what you've been pulling, and what you're looking for. Time wipe, return all creatures, throw your hand and destroy all creatures. That's a interesting idea, but I think... The extra cost compared to like the typical four is actually huge, and just to be able to return one of your own creatures, I don't think is enough of a reason to spend the extra blue mana. Let's see, we got a Sudden Blade Angel, External Eternal Taskmaster, and then a Huatli Ravnica at War. Exile all multicolor permanents. So this is like a kind of like typical um, four mana. But to have it specifically target multicolor, I feel like that's too specific. Unless the meta is all gold cards, which I kind of doubt. <clears throat> Alright, Storm the Citadel. That's pretty cool. Liliana's Triumph again. And then Ashiok. This is another really good Planeswalker. Um, Vivian's Arcbow. Actually, let's take a look at the Ashiok real quick. So, only for three, and I think the primary use is that it mill four cards and then it discards their graveyard. So it's very useful in a lot of things that maybe like Legacy or Modern where they rely on the graveyard. And then um, this thing's kind of a nice bonus. I feel like it's not as relevant, or is not relevant that often. <laughs> but anytime, basically it prevents you them from tutoring anything up. So very useful card, very versatile. We have a Rouse Outburst, Challenger Troll, another Casmina we pulled. I think we even have a Mythic of that. 
Commence the end game. Feels like Avengers reference. Can't be countered. Draw two cards and then a mass X, where X is the number of cards in your hand. Hmm. Seems a little underwhelming. Oh, I also want the Tafari. So Liliana, Tafari, those are the ones we're going for. <clears throat> Very cool how every pack has a Planeswalker. It just changes the game. And I hope they hope this is just a War of the Spark thing, and then they kind of stop that. Otherwise, they're just Planeswalker becomes very commoditized. Tenth District Legionnaire. Here's a Boros guy. Who? We asked for Tafari. There's Tafari. <clears throat> All right, another one for three mana, with four loyalty. Each opponent can cast spells. Each opponent can cast spells only any time they can cast a sorcerer. That's awesome. So they basically lose instant speed until end of turn for plus one. You may cast sorcery spells as if they had flash. That's not bad. Um, then return up to one target artifact creature enchantment to its owner's hand and then draw a card. Really strong. I feel like the passive is more relevant. The minus, the plus one is just to kind of like um, continue to uptick them, but then the minus three, like, is the the move that you know that's. Uh, very useful, but you kind of just use it when you need to. Ah, Karn, awesome. This is, I really like this one. I don't think we went over it last time. So we have four mana, five loyalty, activate abilities of artifacts or opponent control can't be activated, and then until the end of your turn, this one was typical. One tar non creature artifact becomes artifact creature with power and toughness equal to its converted mana cost, and then I like this one. You may search your artifact for minus two for artifact card you own outside the game reveal. So basically, you just add a artifact to your hand. Ooh, and a foil rare. We have Living Twister for two red and green. Discarded land card. Living Twister deals two damage to any... Hmm, it's like Seismic Assault. That doesn't sound very good. Return a tapped land you control to its owner's hand. Ooh, wow, to its owner's hand. That's really good. That's crazy, just for a green? Hmm. And it's a 2-5. That's, that's pretty beefy for three mana. Hmm, I wonder if that's a really good one. That actually sounds like really annoying. Okay, we got a Dread Malkin. Anything that's one mana and it's can be pretty good. Menace uh, can't be blocked except for two or more creatures. Sacrifice another creature Planeswalk. Uh, that's not that good. And then we have an Angrath. Guy looks super intense. Creatures you have control have Menace, a mass two. Here we go, here is our mythic god eternal of Ronus. People have been speculating that when you pull your your box will either have planeswalker or mythics. I don't think that's the case so far. <clears throat> so for five, we have a five five death touch. Enters the battlefield, double the power of each other creature you control till end of turn. And they gain vigilance, when it dies, put into the huh. Doesn't sound that great. Kind of sounds like a different version of Crater Hoof. That's not as good. All right, two packs left. We got Tybalt's Rager, Challenger Troll, Rescuer Finx, and then, ooh, nice, Jace. Always happy to see Jace, even though this one is, it's very unique. Basically a Lab Maniac, so if you run out of cards, you win instead of losing. Target player puts the top two cards into their graveyard, and then draw cards, so it's basically a Thoughtseize. And if you can get the eight, draw seven cards. And then we have a foil common. And on to our last pack. So another awesome opening. We got two mythics in this video. Very happy with that. Be sure to hit that like button on your way out, guys. And uh, yeah, if, you're, if you haven't already subscribed, definitely do so. Uh, we're going to be pumping out these openings for quite a while. Sahili, so another very good uh, Planeswalker. Actually, we'll just hit this real quick. Um, so for three man, another five loyalty. This one only has minus two. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, create a 1-1 one, one artifact, and then target artifact you control comes with another copy until the end of turn, except it's an artifact in addition to its other types. Very cool. For 6 mana, um, choose one or more. This is an interesting one. So this is, could be a... I feel like it's a non-split card, that it's a split card, but because you can do any of these, or any number of these, so... It is six mana is a lot, but 
Um, I feel like it can just do a lot of damage, so I feel like that's an ultimate control card that I'm not sure if it's worth the mana cost, but it's super powerful. So there you guys have it, very strong opening, loving War of the Spark, and yeah, once again, hit that like button down below, subscribe for future content, we're going to be doing a lot of these videos, uh, so stay tuned, I'm Moana Turtle, and I'll catch you guys next time, peace.